Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this one, we're looking at the Overclockers Radiant system. Now, I've had this for the longest time, so um, big thank you to uh, Overclockers for letting me have it for so long. I've used this as a primary rig for about six months, I think now, on um, the way time goes. So yeah, massive shout outs to those guys for just letting me keep hold of it and um, just you know finally getting around to doing the system. So yeah, I appreciate you just holding on. Being that this is my first system review, I'm gonna air quotes it because it's not going to be a full review because I don't know elaborate testing and stuff yet so that's something we're going to get to in time but for now I'm going to kind of keep it as an overview slash showcase so I hope everyone uh, is okay with that put your link in the description that you can go and check out for something that's a little bit more comprehensive but obviously being this is the first system this is going to be where we set some kind of uh, some rough goals and stuff and then the next system we do we can base it off of this and then that's where we build up the momentum and kind of broaden our graphs and stuff like that so for now this is going to be more of a little showcase and tell you what overclockers really offer to show you what the system can do really so now this system currently sat on the, the desk is a ryzen 5 2600 um, you can get loads of different configurations for any budget. Literally, they've got systems out. They do eight-pack systems. They've got one that's thirty thousand pounds. If anyone wants a video on that, let me know, and I'll see if we can go up to the headquarters and do a video or not. Something that'd be pretty cool. Um, but this one is coming in at forty nine nine. Now I've actually spec this up myself and worked out every part that's in it to come up with how much you could do it for if you build it yourself, and then overclock us with their fifteen hundred price tag. Um, I'll give you a bit of an idea of extras they put in here because it's not just a you know a chuck together system there's extras in here that you wouldn't usually get so there are um, there's more attention to detail than just any other build so being this is a an ROG uh, build there's a few little additions in there which I'll cover uh, later in the video the system we've got on the desk here as configured comes at 1500 this is in the nzxt noctis 450 tower with the ryzen 5 2600 that's a 3.4 gigahertz with 3.9 gigahertz boost using an asus rog strix x 470 f am4 motherboard now the cooler on here we've got one of the amd spire coolers obviously you can configure different options for this as well um, the other systems do have aios and you can go fully water and stuff like that as well we've got 16 gigabytes of team group ddr4 this is running at 32 megahertz that's a RGB kit. This does have Asus Aura Sync as well, so if you want to, you can configure everything that's in here. It has got a controller in there that's linked to the motherboard, so you can do all that fancy stuff if you want to. This is just cycling around just to give you a rough idea of what you can expect. There is some additional RGB stuff in there as well that I'll cover off later. We've currently got a Samsung 860 250 gig SSD for this. One thing I would recommend if you want it to be a little bit more neat with the cables is if you upgrade to an m.2 um, that will then remove the need for the power cable and the sat cable and just clean it up a little bit as well the cable management in this already is very good though you know they've done a good job for the space constraints and stuff in there so now graphics card you can configure this differently as well this has got a 1060 from asus it's the strix and i've got a few benchmarks and we'll talk about as well as we go so as i said i've been using this for the last about six months i think as my personal rig primarily editing i don't really game as much anymore but um the satisfactory video i did on the on the channel that was using this rig that was in high settings i've been playing uh, gta with the benchmark on there on a high setting with 1080p you get an average of 100 fps and then if you do it at 2560 you get an average of 81 that's on high as well i think if you want to go for ultra settings or if maybe you want to stream as well as playing on high settings then you're going to need to go up to a 1070 but certainly for what i've been doing i've never had any you know lag issues or frame drops or anything like that it also does benefit cuda for premiere pro um, temperatures have been very good as well about 60 degrees and a high on the graphics card so very cool and then the same for the system we've had a top end of 70 degrees that was during renders and uh, using the occt stress tests it's all been very cool and just worked very fluently uh, throughout the time i've used it um, other things to note they're using a seasonic power supply in this uh, 550 watts so it's not just a cheaper one because it's not being seen or anything they've put a quality power supply in there which is also nice i have incorporated that into the pricing of it all as well in terms of other games um why is the tomb raider and tomb raider War are the ones that we tried we've got a average of 111 frames a second on 1080p and then 73 frames on 2560 by 1440 that was on maxed out 
as high as you can go. And then Rise of the Tomb Raider, we got 84 frames as average on 1080p and then 56 on 2560. Okay, so specking it up, I did this. I spent about an hour trying to work out everything that was in here. There are some additional things in here, such as the covers for the fans to give them RGB. They are standard black by the NZXT case. So they're additional in there. The RGB strips is also, I think it's a Fantex controller in the back that's given you all of these effects to choose from that you can use with the AuraSync as well. So yeah, adding on the RGB controller and everything like that, it came to a total of 1,315 pounds. So considering it's only 175 out from what overclockers will sell it to you for as a pre-built and the fact that they've done all of the cable management. You've also got a warranty on there as well that you wouldn't have if you did it all together on your own. I think that definitely does create an affordable package and if I didn't want to build it myself, because no matter how many tutorials you can watch, there'll still be some people that will still be hesitant about building it. You know, I built my first one in 2010. I found it to be a little bit tricky at the start. Um, but definitely satisfying once I did it, but you know, there'll still be some people that struggle to believe in themselves and have the self-confidence to do it. If you're one of the people that just doesn't want to risk it, then fair enough, and you want to buy a pre-built, then I don't think that is too bad of a premium considering that there's an extra attention to detail with lighting and all the effects and controllers and stuff like that on there. Not too much more to get it all done for you and deliver to your house. Overall, pretty good. One small little change on the system that's on the site now as opposed to this one I've got here is there's a terabyte hard drive included as well so you could probably add about 40 pound onto what it would cost to make a, build, a full system so you're about 150 pound premium for the whole thing being done for you. Certainly be configured to be very quiet as well I can't hear it um, just you know when I'm just in the office doing work um, certainly a lot quieter than the system I was using before. If anyone is wondering, that was what I built in 2010. There's been a few little changes, but that's still running an i7 X58, the, uh, the 950 from that era. So that's everything in there is a lot louder just because, you know, technology has advanced a lot in that time. So I, another point in me saying this is going to be more of a showcase because I haven't got anything that I can really base it on that's recent because there's you know a nine year gap between that PC and this one. So um, you're gonna have to bear with me in terms of getting results and comparing it to other things as uh, it could be a little while before we build up a, a plethora of um, results to compare against. Other things to note, as this is an ROG case, you've got some artwork. Obviously you can see on the front of the case here, there's also some on the other side. So no matter what angle it's at, it does look nice no matter what way around it is. And it's not just a plain back on there either. There's some underglow as well, not just actually in the case, which looks nice. Okay, so being that um, there's only so much I can really talk about as of yet with this system, if you've got any more questions, leave them in the comments box below and we'll get a discussion going because there's more things I can answer there that I probably will, you know, brush over in this video or just totally forget about. There's a lot I kind of need to try and cover, um, but I'm going to try and do the best uh, I can with my limited knowledge and uh, ability also please give me some feedback on the shots that i've put over the top of this voiceover let me know what you think um i did try and get some nice crispy shots to illustrate a little bit more what's going on there than just you know sitting here and doing it like a kind of kind of camcorder style but um i'm hoping it will all work out well what you could do is if you wanted to get a little bit fancy when i said about removing the ssd and swapping it to an m.2 is you could take away the cages to hold the ssds and the move but um, a bit of carbon across the top or just a bit of plastic card or something like that just to clean it up a little bit you know that will look a lot better than what's in there now so um, just an idea again there just so you know this system does go out to other reviewers so that's why the window is a little bit scuffed you will get a nice window when you get yours this has obviously just been around to a few people so so that's why there's a little bit of a mark on there so I think that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the kind of overview of this system, the Radiant system from Overclockers UK. I will put links in the description box below if you want to check out the systems they offer. Little quick PSA, they are affiliate links, so if you do buy a system through Overclockers, I will get a percentage of that back. It doesn't cost you any extra, but it does help out me, and also the money goes back into the channel as well, so I do appreciate if you do use that link. If you do, let me know as well, and I'll be sure to thank you in the comments. But as for now, this has been the Overclockers Radiant system. I've loved this, uh, it's going to be sad to see it go, but um, it is what it is. But it's just clear that I need to get on with my own system and get that built. So, so thank you for watching, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. 
be sure to follow me on social media as well for updates about what's going live. It's all getting rather busy, so um, I'll be posting updates about what I'm doing on there. But I think that's it for now. So thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.